Boob. I am Pinstar, and this is Transport Fever. So, I indeed have a fever, and the only cure is efficiently moving goods and services back and forth between towns in order to make money. Strategy and tactics. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this uh, was a fairly recent uh, Pinstar plays uh, uh, series of mine, just to get a feel for it, uh, see if you guys had any interest in it, and you did. Um, and I wanted to play around with it myself to see if I had any interest in it, and I do. So I decided to uh, well, play it to the nines, uh, go a bit crazy with it, and develop ourselves a little bit of a strategy here. So this is going to be a proper strategy and tactics series series. We are going to be playing a free game here, but in strategy and tactics um, thing uh, here, we are going to be playing on the hardest difficulty. And that is not only hard difficulty here, but also the 1850s. Things are, th there's fewer technologies. There, there are less shiny things available to us. Uh, things are uh, more difficult to make money with in the 1850s than they are in the 1900s or the 1950s. So yeah, this is as, is literally as hard as you can get. Um, now uh, I just I'm going with um, with a larger world seed here or size here just so we have a bigger sandbox to play around in here, and I put a vote on my uh, Twitter page um, to see which uh, which area would we w w what area we would like to be in Europe or USA or well, I phrased it desert or grass, um, and you guys voted for grass so that means we are going Europe. If you want to uh, uh, have the possibility of voting in future votes, uh, just hop. Uh, just uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, that's at Pinstar. Now for our seed here. Well, we got we we know a seed that we like. Uh, how about uh, ancient seeds? No, oh, those work out well for us in uh, in Stardew Valley. Why not uh, do an ancient seed here? Huh? All right. Let's get started. Phew, that was one long loading time. Of course, you guys didn't have to uh, sit through that. <laughs> but we here we are in our randomly generated European-ish map. Now, our choice of map styles, uh, USA versus Europe, is more important than whether or not we want to stare at a bunch of grass or we want to stare at a bunch of desert. I mean, that is certainly a factor, and aesthetics do factor in, but one of the other things that factors into USA versus Europe is the availability of trains, trams, and uh, buses. Uh, different regions have different available things. Um, the United States arguably has uh, slightly better buses, I think, uh, but n a little bit slower trains in the early years, and then like later on, they, they get some crazy good trains. Crazy expensive trains, but crazy good trains. Uh, whereas Europe um, has some better trams and um, um, some better earlier trains, uh, but not as much later on. Um, I mean, there's still serviceable stuff uh, for, for both areas. You can still play the game either way. So it's, it's partially an aesthetics choice, but there is some gameplay elements to it. Um... Now then, we need to choose a starting spot here. Uh, now, what you want to look for in a starting spot when starting under these conditions, because in order to just keep your head above water in these conditions, you need to look for a really, really good starting spot. What you're looking for is a raw material producing site. And actually, let me clarify that there are there are three specific early lines that you can uh, you can viably do um, for early profits, and that is oil to fuel. Uh, second would be uh, stone to construction materials, and the third would be food to food processing. All of these are uh, two-step um, uh, production lines. You have a raw material producer. You bring that raw material to a single solitary uh, refinery that turns it into a usable product. That usable product it can then be um, directly imported to a town thus completing the loop. You need to have a complete supply loop 
um, if you are uh, if you are to make any money in the long run. Uh, otherwise, factories will stop uh, uh, sending products, demanding products, and uh, <coughs> your whole supply line not, is not going to work. Now, the other stuff, you know, the lumber, the coal, all that other stuff is all fine and dandy, but they're part of much more complex uh, um, supply lines. Now, you might say, well, Pinstar, more complex means more lines, which means more money for me, right? Mm, not so much. Uh, I mean, maybe theoretically, but there's a lot more out outlay. And hard, we only start with 1.2 million. Oh, wait a minute. No, we don't. We start with zero and have a 1.2 million loan. We actually start the game with zero actual dollars to our name. Uh, because everything we start with is a loan. Now, we can take more loans so we can give ourselves more starting cash, and I might do that as we play here. But bear in mind, the loan interest rates can eat you alive if you take them too aggressively uh, and don't uh, use them for things that will build, uh, build up more... Um, profitability for you. So anyway, what are we looking for? So we're looking for oil, food, or uh, construction materials. Second thing we're looking for is um, a, uh, um, a relatively close, it doesn't have to be directly close, um, pairing of, uh, of the raw material producer and the, uh, um, you know, the, the refining thing. And more importantly, in a semi straight line or as straight a line as you can get like a good example here of a things that look like they're close but they're not close is these so so here we got this oil well here and here we got this refinery but look at the roads that are provided look at that going all the way around now you might say well uh, wait a minute pinstar aren't you paid by the distance traveled so wouldn't a really long route give me a lot of money per trip no, you are paid as the crow flies. So the distance traveled is calculated to be here to here. So the most profitable way you could have these two is if there was a straight line here. Now, yes, you could just build a road between the two. That would, that would hook them up and make a real straight line. But now you're outlaying capital that you could be spending on something else. So no, what you're looking for is two stations that use the existing roads um, and are in relatively straight lines to each other. They do not have to be absolutely perfect. Um, now, I have done some scouring over here, so you're not. this isn't just going to be a me, uh, bunch of hemming and hawing. Uh, and I have found an ideal location. The other thing you want to look for is one where the raw material producer is closer to some towns than the refinery is. Um, and there's, there's a very important reason for that. So the area that I have chosen here to be our sort of our starting area is this. Oil route well to refinery. <coughs> Pardon. So if, as you can see here, yes, it's not a literal straight line, but going here, 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 that's, that's a fairly straight line. You know, it's not why it's not double backing against itself. It's, it's, you know, it, yes, yes, it would be shorter if it were just a strict diagonal, but it's still always moving towards the, and despite the, that's just a graphical glitch. There's, there is actually a road there. Um, the uh, there there it is a straight enough line to make it worth our while. Secondly, this our oil well is closer to a couple of good towns here, which need renaming. Yes, let us rename them. Oops, we've got Ficklewood on this side. And uh, let's go with Pelican Town. I like I like sort of hooking up and making continuity within our games here. Now to get started, what we need to do is also. By the way, yes, there are passengers. You can theoretically make money from passengers. Um, we are going to be getting into passengers, don't you worry. 
but not at the start of the game. You need the the stability and the pricing from um, uh, freight shipments in order to make some money at the get-go. There's really no other way to do it on hard. Uh, medium and easy, yeah, you can play around with a lot more flexible strats. Um, but on hard, you really, really need to, to stick with this. So we need to get one of these. Also, we want the large truck station. Normally I wouldn't shell out for that, but this thing's going to get busy later on and upgrading it, uh, after the fact causes all the built up cargo in it to disappear. That causes problems. So we're going to build the big one from the get go. So we don't need to worry about upgrading it. It is a little bit extra capital, but actually compared to the little one, it's not that much extra. Um, now the one other thing you want to do is you want to minimize how much you pay for this. And the major cost isn't the structure itself, it's the terrain modification. Now down here, this is looking pretty good actually. Uh, you get anything below 30 will work. Also, see how the, the, how the oil well is highlighted up there? Um, that means it's within the catchment area, which means that anything that the oil well produces um, can show... Oh, wait, wait. Ah, some, somehow my thing slipped. I was about to say, like, 30 is a little bit cheap. Uh, but, yeah, no, let's try the other side of the road here. We want to get away from the 70s. We do not want to drop that much. See see how all that, all that white brick um, thing below it? It's trying to raise all the terrain up there, and that's what's costing us so much. But if we can get somewhere flatter, there... And the other thing you want to do, and this is this is just a little trick for later on, is get it close enough so that it attaches itself to the road. Like, just don't sandwich it straight up to the road, even if it allows it. Give it a little space. You'll you'll be happy you did this later on. Trust me. I'll show you why probably several episodes down the line, because we won't we won't get to the point where that becomes important until later. All right, so we've got our first area. Now we need our second area. Again, we're going to go with the big uh, uh, station here. Although, strictly speaking, you don't need a big one for this area because it kind of is simple in terms of what, uh, what goes on in here. It's just trucks dropping off fuel, picking up uh, uh, gas. Uh, so you know what? Uh, I might regret this later, but we're going to go with the, with the little one here. No, no, I'm going to do the large one. I, I'm not going to just change what I've been practicing with. Now here, the train's a little bit more in our favor, so we can get the cost down. Um, and again, you want to give it a little push away from the road. Anything under 30 is great. 21 is awesome. 20.8 is awesome. And also make sure that our refinery is highlighted. Boom. Now, another, the next uh, order of business here is to get ourselves... Uh, some destinations. Remember, your 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 loop here doesn't work as effectively until you complete it. Oil goes to oil refinery, turns it into fuel, and also refined oil. But that's a that's a byproduct that for, for to be used later. Um, but that fuel, which is ultimately the product that we're after, needs to be sent somewhere. Um, and here here's here's the little trick here. What we want to do is we want to t teach the system that, yes, we do have a place for this oil, for this fuel that you're going to send. We've got two awesome towns right next to us, Ficklewood and Pelican Town. We're going to hook them both up right now. Now, um, in order to maximize the, the amount of demand for your goods here, um, what you need to do is you need to take a look at the type of good that you're going to be shipping. Um, so if we look here at Pelican Town, it's break, it's broken in, the demands are broken into three different segments. We've got population, which is just people. This is how many passengers you move to and from the town. Um, pretty simple there. That's, that's a, that's a pretty simple good. It's a little bit finicky, which is why we're not starting with it, but it's, it's simple. Um, now the shopping goods, the commercial goods here are tools, food, and goods. And the industrial goods are construction materials, machinery, and fuel. Now, where these, these two goods need to be sent is those parts of the town. So if we open up our little side panel here, 
um, and open up this, we can see what different parts of the town are zoned to be different building types. So if we go in here to Pelican Town, we can see that the industrial zone's right over here. Um, so it wouldn't make any sense to put the industrial depot, say, over here, because none of these people care about the deliveries of fuel. It's the industries that want the fuel. So we're going to take, in this, in this case, yes, you do want the little one because um, minimizing the amount of cost by minimizing the size here is important. Um, now, by minimizing cost, you want to avoid stomping on buildings. See, 13.1K, 112K, just by stomping on one building. This is why you need to avoid doing that as much as possible. Um now, in this case, we can get almost all of the industrial area covered, except for that little sliver at the bottom, but that's okay. Uh, and also a little tiny sliver over on the right. But we've got most of the industry here. It'll, it should suffice. Uh, and it's only 12K to place the station, so boom. Now, over here in Ficklewood, um, nice, nice little industrial area over here. This little, uh, this little kitty corner over here kind of looks like it might work for us here. And again, don't stomp on... Yeah, look at that. We stomp on two buildings. It's 486K. No, that would, that, would end our, that would end our game before it started. Now, yes, it's a bit more expensive over here, but this location is a bit too perfect to not put it here. <coughs> Pardon. Now... All right, so we've got our things here. We need one more step here, and that is our, our road depot. Uh, now, what you want to do with your road depot to sort of minimize your headaches here is you want to put it near your fuel line, but you want to put it on the side away from the refinery. For some reason, if you put, if we were to put it, say, like right here, all of our new cars um, that we are all of our new trucks that we buy would randomly decide, oh, all right, I'm going to start my route. And even, even though you named this as the first stop, I'm going to go all the way down here as my first stop. And you have to manually reroute them. It's a pain in the butt. Um, so here to save you the headache, just put it up here. It'll start here as their first stop, which is where we want them to go. Um, or ra rather where we want them to start. Um, here, yeah, just go for cost savings, and this one can be close to the road. Um, it that, that it, you don't need to do the spacing thing that I did with this other one. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to send out our pioneers here. Now, by pioneer, god damn it, game! I hate it that by moving my left and right arrows, it changes what designation. Get the hell out of here, you! That's money I didn't want to spend. We need the actual in dr p truck depot. Minor setback, which in this case is not a good thing. Okay. Uh, shaking that one off. Shaking that one off. Okay. So we only got two things to choose from. Yeah, welcome to, to 1850. <laughs> they both involve horses. Welcome to 1850. So horse wagon, this is going to be our mainstay for the time being. So what we need to do is we need to buy three of them. One, two, three. Now the first one, we are going to set up a new line. This is going to be our sort of our spinal thing. This, this line is going to be the whole reason our business is going to stay afloat in the early, early game. Um, we will start here and go there. That's it. That's all we want out of that line. Road vehicle number two, new line, will start here and go here. And that's all we need that to do. And we'll buy another, oh, good. Well, I, I'm going to be buying more of them anyway, so it's, I, I forgot that I already bought three. So here we're going to do a new line from here up to here. And the other one we'll, we'll keep in, in place for the moment. So let us unpause. Now. There's, here's the reason, and I'm going to keep this open because I need to remind myself that I have a fourth vehicle in there. I'll send it on its merry way once, once we're ready to kick it into action here. 
Um, so what these do is these basically we don't get to, to get to decide when in what what goods we we pick up um, or rather place in our in our depots here uh, to pay, pick up. The industries are actually the ones that make that call. Now, as a way to sort of flag the industries to say, hey, we got these routes set up. Why don't you start sending some goods our way? It might uh, it might you, you might, you know. We might be able to send them to the places that you want to send them. You need to at least set up the line and set up road vehicles that go between them just so that they get the memo that that transportation network is available. It takes them a minute or two to get the memo. Here, um, our road vehicle, um, where's number one? Here's road vehicle number one. It's it's left, it's, it's empty. The oil that's building up here hasn't gotten the memo that, hey, there's a refinery that uh, would love to have that oil. Um, so they haven't sent us anything here into our station yet. That's fine. That's normal. Don't panic. But do keep this this open because what we're going to do is as soon as we see one oil pop up here, we're going to tell these guys to turn around and go get that oil. No need to have them make a full trip. There it is. Boom. Ten crude oil. They're like, holy crap, there's there's oil and refineries. Go, go, go. So as soon as that shows up here, now you can start sending stuff out. Now, notice I've sent that other uh, vehicle up here, too. Each of these vehicles can hold for oil. So as soon as, yeah, see, there's two headed there. Why don't we buy another one? Now, a uh, quick way to assign them here rather than click on here, open up the thing, blah, blah, blah. The easiest way is set line all one. Even if you just bought one road vehicle, boom, it's on line one. And it's and so this is going to be kind of our name of our game here. We're we're going to be watching this one here, Ficklewood West. We're going to be watching it like a fucking hawk, um, to make sure that um, we are basically taking away every ounce of oil that we get here, but also not to send them before they're ready. Um, because what we don't want is we don't want empties going there because we are soaking up the costs of these things. Every minute they are on the road, we are there. There, you'll see a little negative tick above every single one of our vehicles. Um, sorry, it's at seven. We get seven. We buy a new vehicle and put it on the line. Um, and we just rinse and repeat aggressively as as we go on here. This is going to be sort of the mainstay of our strat our early starting strategy here. Um, now our other two carts, yeah, they're not doing anything at the moment, but that's okay. They're there. They're there to deliver the memo um, for the rest of our line, and that's an important part. That's a really freaking important part because that's going to get our our uh, the second part of our strategy up and running. Um, uh, sooner rather than later. Okay, you just, oh, wait. Yeah, you got four more. We need more road vehicles. Again, just, I mean, it's not going to shut off production if it starts building up a little oil. The reason I'm watching it like a hawk and sending things as soon as there's enough oil for a full load is because I want to to reap that benefit as soon as possible not because the oil well is going to decide that i'm not moving enough um if you know 10 12 oil starts building up and later on a lot more oil is going to build up because eventually that thing is just going to start cranking out production faster than we can move it but that's okay that's okay as long as we have a constant stream here of production that we can keep moving we'll be fine yeah, as soon as it gets to seven, make another one. And basically, we're going to continue doing this until our carts start showing back up again from their return trip. As soon as they do that, then then we will shift our focus. So I think I might end the episode here. So when we return here, um, I, a little time will have passed. I'm going to just continue, buy a vehicle, send it down the line, and continue to rinse and repeat that until we start getting our, uh, 
uh, cars return. Not not the uh, not the carts going to the two cities return trip. I mean the carts from the refinery return trip. Um, so if you like this episode and you want to see more like it, you want to see where I'm going with all this madness, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback is always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar, signing out. See ya.